Hi. In the last video we looked at crystal structures. We looked at the arrangement of atoms uh, in a few examples of materials that we might find uh, in and around our houses. I want to take that a little bit further today. I want to look at the forces that hold those atoms together and what controls their uh, the change in that structure. So why does a metal expand, for instance, when it's heated uh, and that sort of thing. So this is all going to be about interatomic and equivalently intermolecular forces. Um, what are we going to use for this? Well, we're going to use an elastic band. Let's see how far we get. Well, here's our setup. One elastic band. Actually, it's been snipped, so it's a single strand of what used to be an elastic band. Um, all I've done is hang some white uh, paper behind it just to give us some sort of a background. Um, lid off some jar or other. Doesn't really matter. The key point is this little orange pin I've stuck in here. I'm going to use that as a marker. And then as you can see behind, I've propped up a, um, uh, a ruler in centimetres. So what we're going to do is note the position of this uh, fantastic contraption when there's no weight placed in this tin lid. And then we're going to gradually add weights and see how the extension of our elastic band um, progresses. Okay, so our, um, our weights are actually just a bunch of antique things from an old set of kitchen scales. So they're actually in units of ounces, believe it or not. But it doesn't really matter because we're looking at multiples here rather than anything else. So as it sits at the moment, I think our orange marker from where I'm looking is at about 7.7 .7 centimetres on this scale. Let's add our first weight in here. So this is one unit on this scale of ounces. And that probably takes us up to about 8.7 maybe. This is very approximate, so I'm not um, I'm not going to get too worked up measuring this with incredible precision. I'm just trying to get um, reasonable numbers uh, for this. So with two in there, I think we're at about 9.6. Uh, we can go up to three, can't we? We can just add the one back in there on top of this one. So our elastic band has extended a little bit more. And I think we're probably up to 10.7 now. Uh, one more. So let's take these three ounces out. I'm going to put four ounces in, quarter of a pound. Obviously a bit more extension now. Um, stop this swinging a little bit. So from my vantage point now, I would say that's about hmm, 11.9. And that's probably enough. Let's see what we can do with these numbers. OK, so here's the numbers I wrote down earlier as we were adding weights into our pan at the bottom of the elastic band. And these are the weights that I added. They were in ounces, but as I say, it doesn't really matter. It's actually multiples that we're interested in. And what I've done in blue over here is simply to write down how much the elastic band stretched when I added that weight. So going from zero to one, I got a change of about one centimeter. From one to two, it was about 0.9 centimeters, nine millimeters. Two to three, 
were up to 1.1 and 3 to 4 it was 1.2. Now remember these are all very approximate measurements. I was doing this simply by line of sight to a little map pin stuck into the side um, of, my, um, of my amazing little system over there. Okay, so my next task actually is to look at the total extension. So we've got one um, and it then becomes, let me change colour again, uh, we've gone from 1 to 1 1.9 to 3.0 to 4.2, okay? And I'm going to do a graph now between um, the weight added and the extension, or rather the cumulative extension that I've just worked out. And that graph is going to tell us what we need to know uh, about the system that we're looking at. So let's start with putting some axes on. I'm going to move this down out of the way so I've got a little bit more space up here. Um, so we're going to start where we had nothing added and then we'll add one ounce to three and four all right so that's our weight added over here and then on the other side we need the cumulative extension make this one two three and four and this is the extension total extension uh, in centimeters. All right, so we put the numbers in and plot our graph. So we had zero extension with zero weight added. All right, so this is our first our first point on our graph. And then with a weight of one unit added, we had an extension of one centimeter. So our next point on the graph is there. Uh, with two added, we actually went up to a total of R1.9, so that's here. Uh, for three ounces added, our extension went up to three, so we're over here. We move back, back onto the white, you'll be able to see it a little bit more easier perhaps. And then finally, we had a four ounce weight in there. So we're up here, and our total extension then was uh, about 4.2, which is there. All right, now although this is far from uh, precise, the one thing you might be able to see if I take away the clutter underneath, so let's give ourselves a clean background is that these points, although not exact, these points are all approximately on a straight line. Okay, so our straight line, I'm going to draw it freehand, passes through our points pretty much like that. And that's the key thing uh, that I wanted to try and demonstrate to you. Here then is our key relationship that we demonstrated earlier, that the extension it was proportional to the weight that we added, in our case an elastic band, in order to get an accentuated effect. But actually uh, the classic experiment is to do it with a length of thin wire. We could also do the same thing uh, with a common or garden spring. So this is one that I happen to have in my garage. And if we hung this with weights on one end and we gradually increase those weights, we would get, again, this sort of relationship. The extension in our spring would be proportional to the weight that we added. Now, why is that important? It's important because uh, all of the forces between the atoms and the molecules in our material, so uh, our metal spring or metal wire, 
our elastic band are themselves behaving like a spring right in some really important respects so for instance you're going to have to imagine my hands as a pair of atoms but if we wanted to move our atoms further apart we have to pull on the spring in other words we have to put some energy in some effort in in order to uh, separate our atoms a little bit all right so if we're talking about the expansion of a metal for instance when we heat it up it's the heat energy that is giving uh, enough uh, energy to the system to the atoms in our metal uh, to move them a little bit further apart on average likewise if we want to move our atoms closer together we have to compress the string so in other words it's requiring a little bit of um, energy to put in uh, to be put in all the same and actually uh, if we're only moving our atoms a little bit either closer together or further away we find that this sort of relationship is holding. So uh, in this case, it's not a weight added, it's a, it's a force being applied, some work that is being done on our atoms to either make our spring, our bond between our atoms longer or to make it shorter, right? And the change in the length of this bond between our atoms is proportional to the work that we're putting into it, the energy that's being expended. So it's the same sort of relationship. And actually it explains the experiment we did earlier. Right? If you want to look it up, uh, this was actually uh, an experiment uh, performed by um, a really famous scientist, Robert Hooke. Uh, so uh, surprise, surprise, what we established with our elastic band has a name and the name is uh, Hooke's Law. So Hooke's Law is what we've demonstrated and Hooke's Law comes about at this big scale, so the scale of elastic bands and springs and so on, because the individual atoms that make up our material are themselves connected by things that are behaving like springs. All right, so we've got all our atoms in the system and they're all in three dimensions, of course, uh, connected by things that look like springs or behave, I should say, like springs. So they have an extension that is proportional to uh, the work that we're putting in to either compress them or stretch them. So if our material, elastic band, metal wire, whatever, is composed of atoms or molecules that are all held together like this, then it's no surprise, is it, that if these things are behaving with that relationship, the material as a whole is going to behave in exactly the same way. So by stretching a rubber band, or stretching and squashing a spring, what we've demonstrated uh, in principle is what the forces between the atoms comprising that material um, uh, behave like. So we've looked at interatomic and intermolecular forces using an elastic band. Bye for now.